Hi everyone, in this video we are going to style the features section. Now one quick thing and um, that is when it came to this when we go to, to this trial button when we go less than uh, 500 it's still uh, the padding seems a little bit too much so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to decrease the padding and I'm going to say dot hero uh, where is that here it is and I'm going to say the padding is going to be one rim for top and bottom to RAM for left and right. There we go. So now it looks better. So let's go 1500 and we're going to style this section. So I'm going to go above where is the section. So here is the feature section. So what do we want to do first? So of course we are going to apply some uh, styles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, for the feature section we are going to use uh, also we are going to have a clip path the clip path is going to be a little bit different it's going to have a little bit more edges you can see a little bit more corners and the number of corners they're actually going to specify the number of x y coordinate pairs so as many corners as you have those many pairs you, you need so first off uh, let's come here where is the features I'm going to get rid of this height uh, the color I'm going to change it to color. Uh, so I'm just going to comment it out. I want to test something. So basically, I want the color to be the primary color. So I'm going to keep the. I'm going to remove this one as well. So beneath here, um, let's provide it with some padding. So the padding is going to be var padding large. Now. Uh, I'm going to provide some padding and some margin, but I'm going to comment them out. When I provide the clip path, I'm going to comment them back in, right? So I'm going to say padding uh, top is going to be 13 rem, and I'm going to say margin top. We didn't provide margin negative, negative margins. If you provide negative margin, for example, margin top, it's usually when the element is going to come down. But if you provide negative, the element is going to go up. So that's exactly what they do. So I'm going to keep I'm going to keep them commented out. So I'm going to say display flex. Uh, everything is going to be side by side. We don't want them to be side by side. We want them to be on on top of each other. And to be able to do that, we are going to say flex direction column. We are going to set it to column. All right, so what do we want to do next? Let's just save that. Let's take a look at our uh, content. So we can see that they're uh, arranged towards the left of the container. Now, what do we want? To, what do we want to do here is we want them to be directly in the center. So I'm going to say because flex direction is column horizontal uh, alignment is now done using align items. So I'm going to say center. Let's provide them with some gap of five rem. Now here is going to be our uh, clip path. So clip path. I'm just going to copy paste the polygon and I'm going to try to explain it to you. So the first point is going to be at x0, 0. The second point is going to be at the x100 and y0 and then x100, y100, x85, y100 and it is going to go all the way to x0, y100. And when we save that, um, all right, so what is happening here? So it is the features, clip path, polygon, we don't have any errors. Let's say Z index, uh, does it have, oh, it does have a background color primary. So let me take a look at this. Um, let's see. So with this, uh, huh. so what we actually want to do is not provide the clip path for this. So let me just go ahead and provide it with a different background color. So I'm going to say background color. Uh, let's say background color. Let's set it to white. Let's save that. So this is what we have ended up with. But actually, we don't want this clip path. This is my mistake. I'm sorry for that. We don't want this clip path to be applied for 
we don't want it to be applied for this part, which is the features. We want it to be applied for the diversify part. So this part is where it actually has that clip path. So we don't want it to be applied for that one. Um, let me actually take a look at the code. So for now, what I could do is I could just go ahead and just remove the clip path. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment out the clip path. I'm not going to provide it with any clip path. The only thing that I am going to provide it with a, is with a Z index. I'm going to comment it out because there is something that I need to test out. So what do we have here? There we go. So let's make the window width smaller. So we have our hamburger menu. So the hamburger is on top of this section. So we don't really have to provide that Z index anyway. So I'm just going to keep these commented in, but as far as this part is concerned, I'm going to keep it commented in. When we need it, we are going to comment it. Uh, we are going to keep it commented in, but when we need it, we are going to comment it out. Why am I saying that in reverse? So this is commented out. We are going to keep it this way. When we need it, we are going to comment it back in. I'm sorry for that. I'm not sure what has gotten into me today. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the title for this. I'm going to get rid of this uh, background color. So for the title, we have features underscore underscore title. And then I'm going to provide it with a color. This is going to be var color quaternary. And then font size. This is going to be var font size of medium. So font size M. Uh, the font weight is going to be 400. And the font family is going to be var uh, font family. This is going to be the main font family. Let's save that. Let's take a look at that. So we are right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to increase the width of the screen. There we go. So far, every, everything looks cool. Uh, let's move on to the content, where uh, which these are the content. Okay, um, this is center, not setner. Now they're in the center. So what do I want to do in the content? In the content, I'm just going to specify a display grid. And I'm going to use grid because we haven't done that in a while, right? So I'm going to say features, content. Uh, first, I want the width to be 100% of the container. I'm going to say display grid. Uh, grid template columns. So I'm going to say repeat out of it. So we are going to use that automatic placement algorithm. And we're going to say min max, which we have talked about. So the minimum width they're going to grab is going to be 20 rem, and the maximum is going to be 1 F4. And I'm also going to give it a gap of 5 rem. Let's take a look at that. There we go. So this is how they're going to look like. Now, when we decrease the width of the window, technically they should actually um, go to next line and next line and they they should be responsive at this point so if i just decrease the width of the window you can see that this one it went to the next line and now they all of them are on top of each other so this is one way of providing uh, responsive styles without the use of media queries so next up what i want to do is i want to grab efficiency customizability and adaptability because uh, these styles that are going to be applied on uh, universally or the styles are going to be the same for all these three containers. So I'm going to select all of them. So that's efficiency. Here is customizability. Let's copy that, put it right here. I keep forgetting to put the dot in. Next up, we have adaptability. And that's the final one. Because their content looks the same, so, so will the styles. So what do I want to do here? I'm going to say display grid. This is going to be grid. But for me to be able to actually tell you why it should be grid, uh, first let's go ahead and let's take a look at this. So within the, um, within the features, here is the features. We have the content. And I'm going to grab only one of them. And I'm going to apply the grid view. And I'm going to zoom in so you can really see what is happening. Now, uh, there are going to be 10 columns. 
as you can see there are 11 lines so you don't really have to count it there are 10 columns one column is going to be dedicated to this icon the rest of nine this um, title is going, going to span nine columns and the paragraph is also going to span from column one to column ten so we are going to have ten columns i'm going to say grid template columns you could do this with flex but to be able to do this with flex you need to come up with another set of containers so you're going to put this icon and the title in an in a container and this paragraph is going to be in another container and then you're going to style these you're going to say display flex both of them are going to be next to each other and the entire the big container uh, for this icon for these two containers which were this icon and this title and the paragraph so you're going to have two more containers that's a little bit confusing to just say it but that's what exactly is going to happen and then you are going to say on the main container you're going to say display flex flex direction column but just to simplify that complication we are just going to use grid even though this is a small component but i'm just going to use grid i'm going to say one fr so 10 uh oops not 10 ram but 10 columns and one fr and i'm going to say grid template rows uh repeat uh two call uh, two rows and main content so we're not actually crossing any uh, uh, crossing any lines when we say main content it is not like fixating fixing any kind of height for our content so that's cool as long as you don't fix the height of your uh, rows so if I come here this is what we have ended up with now this it looks better than what we had but we just need to say grid call and we need to position them correctly so at this point we are going to say we want to position uh, these um, items. So, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to position the H3. All these three, so I'm, uh, instead of just writing all of those, I'm just going to copy paste. It's easier. Let's say the font size, var, these are very simple things. I don't want to waste your time too much. So, the font size for this one is going to be small. Grid column is going to be so I wanted to start from the second column and I wanted to stretch all the way towards the end. So there is one uh, trick that you can do and that is minus one. And if you provide minus one, the column is going to stretch to the entire width of the container. So it's going to cross all the columns. You could count all the columns and you could say uh, start from column two and span like five columns, seven columns or provide the column line but if you say negative one it is going to grab the final column so these column names here is the the order is going to be one to like positive numbers one two three four five all the way to eleven but you can also count them from reverse minus one minus two minus three minus four you might have noticed this when we were talking about grid so if i say minus one this line is all this the name of this line the name of it is 11, also minus 1. 11 is, is not going to be that universal name. If you have 10 columns, then the name is going to be 11. If you have 20 columns, then the name is going to be 21. But it doesn't matter how many columns you have. As far as the negative side is concerned, it's always going to be negative 1. So you don't have to worry about the number of columns that you have. This is like a way of simplification, a simplified way of uh, just not be not having the time or the patience to count all the columns you just want to start from there and just stretch across the entire columns and it is going to do that and i'm going to say align self start let's save that let's come here so this is what we've done it looks cool now the only thing remaining is we need to grab this paragraph and we need to stretch it to those uh, to grab those columns as well so uh, next up, what I'm going to do is um, I want to grab all of these uh, icons, which are the clock, the code, and the mobile, as well as their H3s, and I want to change their color because all of them, their color is this color secondary. So I could go ahead and write everything out, which is going to take forever, or I could just copy paste it, which is easier. So these are the three icons, and here are the three H3s. The only thing that I want to do is it's not complicated at all. I just want to 
change their color. So I'm going to say color secondary. That's it. That's the only thing that I'm going to do. Color secondary. Now the next thing is let's just make these icons bigger. So we already have selected the icons. Grab them and remove the final comma. For the final selector, you don't need to provide the comma. So we just remove it. Font size, I'm going to say 3.5 for them. You can see how simple these CSS styles are. They get bigger. And as far as the um, paragraph is concerned, we just need to grab the paragraph, uh, align it, and provide it with some styles. So the paragraphs are within these containers. Okay, so instead of the H3, I'm just going to say P, which is paragraph. Perfect. So for this, first let's go ahead and let's align it. So I'm going to say grid column. I don't want to deal with the number of columns. So I'm going to say start from the first column and stretch the entire width of the container across all the columns. That's why I'm going to say 1 minus 1. Minus 1 is the name of the last line. So the last line's name is minus 1. And this one's name is minus 11. You could also say minus 11 and minus 1. Technically, it should do the same thing. I haven't done this, so let's say... So you can see it works. It doesn't matter as long as you provide any of these names, it is going to work. But minus 11, minus 1, it is in reverse. It's going to confuse. It may, it may confuse some, some people, but um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm, my job is to simplify. So I'm going to simplify like this. Start from the first column and end at the last column. What is the name of the last column? It is minus 1. Perfect. Now, uh, let's increase the font size to var font size extra small, excess. Hmm. And we're going to change the color, var color. This is going to be color quaternary. Save that. Let's take a look at that. Perfect. So I'm going to go to 100 uh, viewport. This is going to be 100 and... Let's get rid of this. Okay. So if I go ahead and hmm, the, this, these texts, they're bigger. These are smaller. So I think there is another viewport. There is another, uh, there we go. It is, make, it is getting smaller. So there is a media query at 1,000, which basically makes the, the text smaller. So let's jump into the 1,000th, uh, very difficult to pronounce, media query, and here we are. So I'm going to provide some other classes in here as well. These classes are going to be, uh, okay, so we are going to decrease the font size of the paragraph, and we are going to decrease basically that. We are going to decrease the font size of the paragraphs. So I'm going to provide a comma. I'm going to copy paste all of these and I'm going to save that. So if I come in here, they look big. Uh, but if I go small, um, there we go. So here they change actually. So I think now they look kind of the same. So let's just take a look at that. The text is different. That's why it's it looks different. Okay, let's just go there. Somehow, it I think it has some more padding, the section, so let's take a look at it. Now, hmm. this is section features. Uh, let's take a look at the padding. Uh, let's take a look at the styles. For this one, I have provided a clip path, which I don't know why, because it doesn't really require it. And it has a padding top. Okay, so it is going to go up, and it is going to have a margin. So I have actually provided some unnecessary styles. Now I think they kind of look the same. Okay, so I don't think we need to have, we need to provide anything else. We, it is uh, responsive by default, but now you can see that they get very small. The font size is, is very, very small. 
So what we are going to do is we are going to provide some more styles just to make sure that the font size is controlled. So within, uh, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of these um, H3s. These are small, right? So if I go less than 800, I'm going to provide a media query at 800. We do have that, so I'm going to go uh, below all the styles. And I'm going to say this is the, grab the comment from here. This is the features section. Okay, so within the features, uh, let's take a look at that. First, grab the uh, title of the features, and I'm going to set it with a fixed uh, font size. I'm going to say dot features uh, title font size is going to be 3 rem. Text align, I'm going to center it. There we go. So it is a little bit bigger. That's cool. That's better. And I'm going to grab all the H H3s. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come down, grab all the H3s, and I'm going to say font size 2.5 rem. Save that. Now they, they are bigger. The only issue is, is the only issue is these uh, paragraphs. They're very, very small. So we need to do something about those paragraphs as well. So um, let me just take a look at our final design. Let's see if this acts in the same way. So it's small. For some reason, it should not get this small. Okay, um, very small, very, very, very small. Let's see what the size is. So you can see even that website is completed. It, it still requires some tweaking of values. So these are the paragraph. Let's take a look at the font size. Font size is 11 pixels, which is really small. So uh, the exactly 800, I'm also going to grab those paragraphs and I'm going to set a fixed font size for them. So I'm going to say H3, grab them, convert them uh, to paragraphs. And I'm going to say font size, so let's set it to 1.5 rem, which is 15 pixels. And now let's take a look at, they are better, they look better. So I'm going to keep making the window width smaller. And uh, let's go to 300. I hope it looks good. There we go, 304. I think this, this looks cool. Uh, we do have our paragraphs. They, they look a little bit big, so I'm going to go 1.4, like one pixel smaller, because we don't want to steal the attraction or attention away from the title. That, that, you need to keep that in mind. Even though these are dummy content, you need to style it in, in the best way possible. So I think this looks cool. Uh, let's take a look at it in iPhone 12, 13, which looks incredibly well, my idea. So we do have our uh, navigation there, and that's okay. So let's set it back to 650. Let's uh, go back. Let's take a look at it. There, there has to be some uh, extra space. But I think when we get to our next section, because of the zigzag pattern, we are going to fix that. So you can see that this uh, font size, it has an issue. I actually forgot to, it is fixed at this point, 1.3, 1.4, I assume. But uh, towards from 800 to 500, there was an issue. But our website that you're going to have the resources for, it doesn't have that issue. So... My website, it has the issue, but your website, it is cool. It looks perfect. So um, um, I don't think that there is something else. There is anything else that I like to do here. So with this, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to wrap everything up. In our next lecture, we are going to talk about the, what is next section? This is the diversify. The diversify section, it has very little code. And it is ha it, I don't think it has a lot of CSS. The only, the difficult CSS is just that clip path that we need to come up with this zigzag pattern. And we need to make it look cool. So with this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.